I know why you're here. This video wasn't enough. You greedy piece of sh Oh, you just got the notification. Thank you for the support. Subscribe if you haven't. So yes, I am back with another list, but this time a list of my top 8 BL anime movies. That's a specific number, right? That's because this is the only 8 anime BL movies out there. How sad. But it's much better than what we had back in my day. Nothing! So these are not series, there are no episodes. If you want my list on anime BL series, you can watch this video. Anyways, before we really start the list, let me introduce today's sponsor, DL Site. DL Site is a free digital publishing platform with the largest selection of Japanese indie content. They allow creators to share their creative works both in and outside of Japan, meaning you are directly supporting the creators when you purchase from DL Site. Now, DL Site Garumani is the best place for BL and Otome fans. I've made videos listening to the juicy BL audios from them. They also have manga and games. It's very easy to purchase from their site. Just search your stuff, add your desired product to cart, and then check out. You can use my discount code Jalis World Welcome to get 30% off. They also give you options on different purchases methods. Recently, they even introduced Translators Unite, where fan translators like you and me, who can read Japanese or understand Japanese, can sign up, translate a doujin or audio, and get paid for your translation. Isn't that amazing? They even provide a system online that you can use to easily place the translated text. No need to use some complicated software. It's all laid out. Profits are shared between the creator and the translator. So check them out, you can click the link in the description. And don't forget to use my code Jellies World Welcome to get 30% off any product. So let's begin Number 8, Sekai Ichi Hatsukoi Propose Hen. So this is just 20 minutes long but it is categorized as a movie and you would need to watch season 1 and season 2 to enjoy this. So it's a special surrounding proposals for all the couples in Sekai Ichi Hatsukoi. You have Onodera and Takano, Chiaki and Hattori, steamy stuff with Kisa and Yukina, Yokozawa with Kirishima. So that's why it's important for you to watch the first season at least to get to know the characters, familiarize yourself with their background to enjoy this proposal special. Now if you remember a few years ago, I was actually disappointed with this movie. I even made an entire video on it, but I'm not gonna link it because it's cringe. But here's a sneak peek just to trigger your memory. Takano Masamune, do you take Onodera Ritsu to be your husband, to love him, to honor him, to comfort him, to treat him in sickness and in health, for taking others, for as long as you shall live? Oh. Onodera Ritsu, do you take Takano Masamune to be your husband, to live together in matrimony, to love him, to honor him, to comfort him, to keep him in sickness and in health, for taking others, for as long as you shall live? <laughs> So I'm not gonna tell you why I was disappointed, but those who have watched this might know. Number 7, Yes Ka No Ka Hambun Ka. Kunieda, a newscaster, is known to be kind, caring to his colleagues and other people around him, when in reality, he curses each and every person behind that smile. Same Kunieda, same. I'm not a people person. Unless you like BL anime cosplay, then I can people. He did manage to create the perfect persona at work to become as successful as he is now, while keeping this part of him hidden. One day, he is tasked to work with an independent stop motion animator Suzuki. He is immediately thrown off by Suzuki's nonchalant attitude towards the first meeting, who also ends up giving him the cold shoulder. Things get even worse when he bumps into Suzuki while off work, causing him to break his arm. Suzuki doesn't recognize it's Kunieda since he had the mask on, so he asks this masked stranger that broke his arm to assist him with this project he was working on. Kunieda agrees since Suzuki didn't recognize him and even gives him a fake name, Oari. And this time, because he had the mask on, he felt free to be himself, cursing around, complaining to Suzuki. You know, the stuff that he would normally not say. So you have masked Oari at night, helping Suzuki, and professional Kunieda working with Suzuki during the day. Will he be able to keep this act up until Suzuki's hand is healed without being discovered? I feel like people don't talk much about this movie, I don't know why. When I first saw it making the rounds on Twitter, I assumed it was a manga that I had already read. And I swear, I think I did read another manga with the same title, but when I sat down to watch this, I realized that it was not based on the manga that I thought it was. This was based on a manga that I had never read before, which made it an extra fun watch. Because I didn't know what to expect, what was gonna happen. My only critique is that throughout the 53 minutes of this movie, we don't see much of the world that they live in. And everything is just dark. Color wise, it's always Tuzuki Studio or Kunieda's apartment, which is very dull and dark. They spend a lot of time in the studio. I think a date outside would have been refreshing in a movie with dull colors. Number six, Sekai Ichi Hatsukoi Yokozawa Takafumi Nobai. 
After drinking himself away, Yokozawa wakes up the next morning to find himself naked in the same room as Kirishima, his superior. With no memory of what happened the night before, he ends up getting blackmailed by Kirishima using an embarrassing photo of that night and has no choice but to go out with Kirishima. Can he handle being teased by Kirishima all the time? And will this actually help him get over his first love? So this is another Sekai Chihatsukoi movie that you once again should at least watch season 1 to enjoy. Now unlike the proposal special, this movie is quite old. It came out during my first year in college in 2014 but it's so special. You have to imagine what a savior Junjo Romantica and Sekai Chihatsukoi was for the BL community back then. Like I am surprised that we don't have a Junjo Romantica or Sekai Chihatsukoi for this generation. Like come on, 3 seasons of Junjo Romantica and 2 seasons of Sekai Chihatsukoi with all these movies and specials. Can you imagine getting something like this for given? That would break the internet. Anyways, nostalgia plays a role to why this is number 6 on my list. But another reason is because the setting is quite different from your usual BL. Cause you have two semi looking characters, a single father, which was quite a breath of fresh air back then. I also liked seeing Yokozawa's point of view of everything because he did seem like a jerk in the anime series. So this is kinda like his redemption arc. Number 5. Umibe no... <laughs> Can my French viewers help me pronounce this? Paris. The story is about Shun, a gay novelist, noticing shy and quiet Mio, an orphaned high school student now living with his relatives. Shun tries to reach out to this boy and gets a hurting reaction, but they soon grow closer until Mio talks about his upcoming move to the city. Three years later, Mio comes back at the age of 20 and openly confesses his love for Shun. Shun is unable to accept this easily because of his past and also because he feels some sort of guilt thinking that he's the one dragging Mio to this kind of lifestyle. He tries to get Mio to let go of this love, to live a normal life, but Mio is adamant. So can Shun accept Mio's feelings? So I've mentioned this in one of my older videos, that I was always confused about this story during the manga days, before this movie came out. Because before the movie, this manga was already very popular and I was able to read the fan translation, but I just couldn't understand the story. However, when I watched this movie, it was completely different than what I had read. And that's when I realized that the movie is an adaptation of this, while I was reading this, the one after they left the island. Anyways, I really like the slice of life feeling of this. I actually love stories that take place in the countryside because in reality, being a city person, I can never survive in the countryside around nature. We all know what happens when Josh meets nature. I also really like the voice actor for young Mio. I think they used an actual child, like what they did for Barakamon, because it just sounded nice. It sounded cute. One problem that I have with this movie is that, well, it's not the movie's fault, but I just find it annoying how Puritans like to use this movie to shame other BL animes out there. Like, oh, what a healthy and realistic story. Unlike these. You know, sometimes I want to watch deep moving stuff like this, and other times I also want to watch the wild stuff. Can we live side by side in peace? Number four, given the movie. This movie is more focused on Haruki and Akiko's relationship and Mafuyu's growth in the band. So for those who are left wondering about the nature of these two characters' relationship in the anime series, you'll finally get a glimpse of their past. The movie covers their band going on to the finals, with Mafuyu exploring this new world of music to learn how to create and write songs, and we also see the drama between Akihiko and Ugetsu, the tension between Haruki and Akihiko. So I've mentioned this in my other video but I really like Given, and as a manga reader, I always knew what to expect with the anime series and the movie. I'm just normally happy to see it getting animated. Number 3, Dokyusei. The story takes place in an all-boys school, specifically during the class choir practice. Kusakabe, a carefree boy who is also a part of a rock band notices Rihito this nerdy looking classmate. His first impression of Rihito was that he was a very uptight boy and kinda arrogant but this changes when Kusakabe walks in on him actually practicing the song all on his own. He helps Rihito out with a few lines and eventually offers to practice with Rihito until the end of the festival. Despite being complete opposites coming from different worlds, they begin to grow closer. Kusakabe realizes that he might just have feelings for this classmate of his. So Dokyusei is also very dear to me because this was during my college years. I specifically remember feeling finishing an exam that day, coming home and watching something as sweet and relaxing as this. And by the end I was like, this movie is actually good! I like the animation style, it's very fitting with the mangaka's art style. I also like the slice of life and quiet setting. I would say that Dokyusei has very similar vibes to Umibe. So if you like this, I'm very sure you will like Dokyusei. Number 2. Dakaretai otoko ichi ni odosarete imasu. Spain hen. 
I would recommend you all to watch the anime first before this movie. So this takes place in Spain. We have Takato and Junta being paired once again as co-stars in a play. But there's one big challenge. To learn the flamenco. Junta didn't have a hard time with this considering his grandfather is a Spaniard and a good flamenco dancer himself. While Takato ends up struggling to learn this. Unable to improve, he decides to visit the country itself for inspiration. Once there, he runs into a very attractive older man who reminded him of a little angel in heat. Turns out this man was Junta's grandfather. Not only does he meet Junta's family, he also ends up running into a love rival. Now I know people have a problem with this anime as I've mentioned in my other video. I don't. I don't hate it. I don't love it. But I am surprised that this made it to number 2 on my list. Because the animation for the dance scenes especially was really bad and the storyline of the movie is quite weak. So what did I enjoy for this to be number 2? The vibes. If you were around when my Yaoi Awards video on the manga Liquor and Cigarettes was still public, I did mention liking small communities or towns and just seeing the day-to-day -day activities. Same thing with what I said for our Not So Lonely Planet travel guide where they visited Spain and Italy showcasing the simple daily lives. I just like something about the vibes. I did wish that they put just a little more money on the dance animation because for a story surrounding dance, I just didn't feel the importance. I want to compliment the voice actors for actually speaking in Spanish throughout the movie but I don't know if they were any good. If I have any viewers who speak Spanish and have watched the movie, can I know if their pronunciation was like accurate? Number one is drum roll. Sai Zuru Toriwa Habatakanai. The clouds gather. Of course, this was going to be number one. The story is about Yashiro, a member of the Yakuza who's also known all around to be a masochist who sleeps around. They call him the public toilet, if that gives you an idea of his lifestyle. One day he's assigned a new bodyguard named Domiki. His first interaction with Domiki doesn't start smooth, but he still finds himself drawn to Domiki even after finding out that he is important. As time goes on, we learn more about Domiki's past and we see Yashiro becoming even more drawn to him. Now this manga is not for the faint of heart, it's very deep, even the movie doesn't shy away from the explicit scenes. I have seen some Puritans complaining about the explicit scenes, but if you've read the manga, there's no way anyone would expect a Sai Zuru Toriwa Habatakana adaptation without these scenes. It's the essence of Yashiro. His entire backstory and current lifestyle revolves around this addiction. I find it really ridiculous when I see people complaining about this. Anyways, before this movie, the manga was already very popular, so I would suggest that you read the manga once you're done with the movie. Don't feel disappointed with the ending, okay? Also, the soundtrack <laughs> still holds a special place in my heart. And that's it, my top 8, or like the only 8 BL anime movies out there. Actually, we have a few good ones coming out this year. The Sasaki Tomiyano graduation movie, the Kagiura and Hirano one that actually came out in February, but not yet to the international audience. We also have Mask Danshi, This Shouldn't Lead to Love, I've already read the fan translation. We have the 10 count movie that's supposed to come out this year, and I swear to god, if it does, I will fly to Japan myself and cry. <laughs> they also recently announced that Cherry Maho is getting an anime adaptation, but I think it's a series instead of a movie. What a time to be alive! So I hope I've given you good stuff to watch. I am once again interested to know what's your arrangement of this list, and I'll see you when I see you. Once again, thank you to DL Set for sponsoring this video. I've listened and read their juicy stuff in my previous videos, so trust me when I say you won't be disappointed. And don't forget to use my discount code Jellies World Welcome to get 30% off. Actually, I was surprised when my list only came up to 8. For some reason, I was convinced that we had more BL anime movies out there. And I still feel like I may have missed something. One of the oldies, maybe. I would really appreciate it if anyone out there is able to remember any of the missing ones. There must be more out there. It can't just be 8. Right? Or maybe I'm just confusing some of the OVAs. I don't know, I just feel like there must be some one or two movies that I'm missing 